what's the deal with entity component systems and why do game engines typically have them and maybe I'll just give you some, some quick tips on this because you know what this is game I don't remember what I call this game engine quick I'm aiming for five minutes so all right ECS what's the deal right how does it work give me the short quick version so I can yeah, move on. That that's what you want. Okay, I hear you. That's what I was looking for. What's well, it's actually way way simpler than I thought. I've read a lot. I've researched a lot. I've practiced an implementation, and I keep learning new things as I go. Yeah. Okay. So here's how I like to think of it, and I think it makes it simple. An entity is your game object. It's just something in a scene. So typically, you have like when you're thinking of a game, you have a scene. And if you want every entity to have its own unique place or ID or whatever, that, that's your entity. Okay, so what's the component in the system? The component in the system is, well, you can think of it as just one thing. Just think of it as a component. The components typically have systems in them for like their update and whatever special stuff you want to attach to it. Uh, systems are basically what's going to happen on the fly. So don't even worry about that. It's usually just like put in with the component or at least that's probably how I'm gonna do it in my component is just any aspect of some thing it could be a position uh, usually you want everything to have a transformation but you might also want them to have other special stuff like you might have well camera lights uh, my mesh info is gonna be a renderable in my case I'm gonna have a skybox that I'm still trying to figure out how to do because I think I'm going to attach it to the camera but I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work with an entity component system so my example over here is not the greatest let me show you a website so I think this makes it a lot more simple and this is from David Colson uh, this isn't the only place I've researched I've looked at a lot of different things but this one helped me understand one thing that's very critical uh, so your entity IDs here this little column right the bit mask of components is just like a big grid so every entity either has it or does not have it and this uh, bit mask is just like a flag of it has it or it doesn't have it and that way it can go to where it needs to go to update all of those all right so this is obviously a lot more confusing than just like wrapping all the functionality up in one class. So why would you do it? Well, the reason is it's all about CPU cache basically, because when you make giant game objects and you start creating a bunch of them, they end up really fragmented in memory and you end up reusing a lot of stuff, but it's all fragmented. So when you're iterating through it to do your update or whatever it is, your CPU cache is just like, Blah. It's loading in stuff that it doesn't necessarily need all the time because it loads in stuff that's next to whatever you're using automatically. So typically what that means is you want the data you're operating on to be right next to each other so that when it's loaded into your CPU cache, it's uh, ready to go for the next part and it doesn't have to uh, miss. It's what they call it, a cache miss. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. It probably will if you're a programmer and uh, I've seen this before with this what you end up doing is you create these large arrays of all the components you're using and they're attached to entity IDs and so when you go through your entity IDs or through your components you can do it either way you can go through your components and update all of them and then uh, then they end up affecting the entity and when you're doing that you can basically update all the components of a similar type at once and it's very cache efficient. You basically end up with pointers to arrays all over the place, which is a lot cheaper than having a bunch of giant objects that are just kind of scattered and all over the place. At least you have nice concise arrays of, oh, go do work here, go do work here. And that's essentially the point. And uh, I think that summarizes it. There's obviously a lot more to it. But that's the, the super quick version, and uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Oh, 
And one more thing before I go. You don't need to do this. You don't need an entity component system. Unless you're having problems with cash misses. If you're just making a little game or something and it's going fine and you're not having performance problems, there's no reason to start worrying about ECS. It's the, whole, the whole thing with ECS is it's, it's a way to solve a problem, as with everything in this field. If the problem is CPU cache misses and large game objects, ECS is basically the best solution. And to be honest, when you think about it, it's not necessarily all that original. It's basically just a hash map of saying, hey, if you have this quality, go here. So uh, it's a very common solution to these sort of problems. You see it with a lot of other things too. Now rambling on, I gotta end this for real. Uh, you see it with things like the indexing in, in meshes, like uh, you know how you have a triangle face. Uh, if you're using an element buffer or an index buffer, it's kind of the same thing. You see that all over in programming. Algorithmically gives you faster results for those scenarios. God, that was a that was a real BS sentence. You can you can call me out on that.